Today we're having fun with polypaint. First when we open up ZBrush, we've got our model here. You can double click on this little divider and it'll open it up. Go up to color, click on this little wheelie and drag it over here. Now you have your color palette docked just to that side. By default down here, ZBrush has white and black selected. The one on the right is the active color, so if you turn that you can see your color is going to change on your mesh. So if you select white again, it's going to go back to normal. That's just based on the material that you have selected here on the left side. ZBrush has all these different types of materials you can select. So the type of material you have affects the way that the color looks. When you change your color to anything other than white, it changes the entire model. So the whole model is red right now, but that's because I haven't assigned a color to anything. So everything is just showing me a preview of which color I want to select. The way that we're going to apply a color to any one subtool Hold Alt, click on it. You have RGB and you have M. If you just want to fill a single subtool with a solid color, select your color first, turn on RGB up here at the top, and now go back over to your color menu and select Fill Object. And it's going to fill that object with just that color. So now if I switch back to white, just the sash is brown. Select the face, make sure RGB is turned on, go over to your color menu, Fill object again, go back to white, and just that subtool is filled with that color. And we can go to the eyeballs here, select white, fill object, go to the arms, select white, fill object. So you get the idea. Once you've filled all of your subtools in your scene with an individual color, now when I change my color palette, nothing changes because everything has a color already assigned to it. We're going to zoom in here real close. Hold Alt, make sure you're clicking on that subtool. In order to paint, open up your brush menu, go down to P and find the paintbrush. Now with the paintbrush, turn your Z intensity all the way to zero, and you're gonna wanna set your RGB intensity, that means the amount of color that's coming out of the brush, down pretty low. I usually set it to two or three. Make sure that RGB is turned on, select whichever color you want, and as you begin to paint, it's pretty low intensity but you can see that that color is now starting to come through without deforming your mesh. When you're doing colors, you want to start with a very low opacity. Symmetry tends to take away from the organic look and feel of color. So most of the time when I'm doing poly paint, I just keep symmetry off. So a side note, when you're going to fill an object like I was just going to do here, I went to fill the eyeballs with a yellowish color. My RGB intensity was set to 8. So when I hit fill object, it's only filling that part of the eye with 8% RGB intensity. I have to turn my intensity all the way up to 100 and then hit fill object to see that full color applied. A thing to be really careful of is if you're using another brush like the clay buildup brush or standard brush, Make sure RGB is turned off because otherwise it's going to think that you want to apply color while you're using that brush. All right, so now you have base color on your object. If you want to put base materials, you can assign materials the same way that you can apply paint. Hold Alt, click on our armor, go to our material tab right here. And if I want it to be shiny and metallic looking, I can select the metal material. And now that material is applied to everything. So the way to fix that, if we do it the same way we do with poly paint, turn RGB off. Next to RGB is this little M for material. Turn material on and hit fill object in your color menu. Now, if I select matte cap white, which was the material I had before, everything else goes back to matte cap white except for the armor. So the color and materials work the same way. You have to select your subtool first, fill the object with either a color or a material, and it sticks to that subtool. So say you accidentally filled a part of your object with the wrong material, like my sash here is filled with the reflective color and it looks bad. So I want to erase that material. Go to your materials, select flat color. Now if you select white, turn on M and hit fill object, it's going to flatten out that material back to base normal. So when you go back to your original material now you can see it's back to the way it was before. So working with poly paint, I like to use layers. If you go over to the right side here, select layers, create a new layer, 
and make sure that the record button is turned on right here. You can click it on and off by selecting this little icon. So when the record button is on, make sure the slider is all the way to the right. And what that does is it records what you're doing on a new layer. So say I want black everywhere. I'm gonna give him a little mustache. If I grab this little slider and bring it back to the center, put it to zero, it turns off whatever I did on that layer. And if I wanna turn that layer back on, I can turn the slider all the way to the right again. If I wanna paint again on this same layer, be sure to click the record button right next to the eyeball. As long as it says record, that means that you can do whatever you want and it's recording. And as soon as you drag the slider back to zero, it turns off that layer. You can just go and create a new layer, paint on your object, make sure record is turned on, and then you can turn it on and off whenever you want. If you like the changes that you did, say I like my mustache and glasses here that I drew on my frog, I'll go down to bake all. If I hit bake all, it's going to apply that layer to my model. So now the layer is gone and the paint is permanently on my model now. That's pretty much it. Those are all the basics of poly painting that you need to know. Then it's pretty much just refining where you want your colors. Start with really, really light, thin opacity and just work your way into your darks and layer on colors the way that you want wherever you need them. That's all I got time for today, guys. Thank you again for watching. Next week, I'm going to get into a tutorial for Z spheres and how to create perfect hands in ZBrush. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next week.